I, I don't know if I should stand up and sit down all the time, but you're probably going to notice we're going to do both. <laughs> but uh, we're very far away from each other right now. Yeah. So sociology is kind of not yeah yet. <laughs> but um, for me, Ole is always... <laughs> ah, nice. Thank you. So for me, Ole is, uh, and you know that, that his kind of work, the science behind how things work in the kitchen now, starting with the brain, how to taste, how to you know have a brain so you actually can be creative. Um, I used a lot of your work uh, on onumami to read up on, and 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 actually you write it in a way that sh we normal or chefs can understand and use in an everyday uh, situation. What I want to ask you is: Have you ever think thought about dividing? umami not only in in these two groups but in in other groups so in able to make it more clear to work with because as a chef as soon it gets as soon you see like your chemical writing chefs go like yeah. well i don't get well, it i did that to teach you and others as well but, but, but that, I, I, that's a privilege of the scientists yes but but um i i uh, what what is the complication here when you talk about taste and sort of understanding what taste is, that is whether it's sort of encoded in our language and whether our culture is used to use a particular way of describing a taste. And now we're talking about taste, as I said, taste proper. Yes. And not about um, um, uh, smell. No. Um, and um, so um, uh, you would not ask the same question if, if, if about salty. If you ask, you wouldn't ask me why, what do you mean by salty or what do you mean by by sour, and um, but umami because it's not really encoded in our language yet. Although it's it's becoming slowly such that you and others can say, well, it tastes umami, and then you don't have to explain it. Mm. But I think for most people, it's still a little bit of a mystery, um, and um, uh, one can of course say, well, it tastes. You get that taste in a particular kind of food stuff. I mean, usually I would say, well, take a very sun-ripe tomato and put it in your mouth and chew it, yes. and chew it 30 times, and then it'll taste sweet and maybe salt, maybe bitter. But after a while, there's something that stays in your mouth and lingers there for a long time. That is umami. And some of you tasted uh, the cookies uh, morning uh, yesterday morning, and maybe also during one of the showcases where we had special umami cookies cooked for you, which were cooked based on this umami synergy. Mm. They will also show you what umami is. But the trouble with umami is that, and this is what also the scientist who proposed it first, Ikuno Ikeda, a Japanese scientist, said you have, to, you have to pay attention to your taste buds because usually it's underneath other tastes, and of course also aromas, mm. but other tastes. So it's, it's more subtle, but it has a very, very special time dependence. And I, I, I also met many chefs who said, wow, this tastes umami. And I said, well, what do you actually mean? Mm. And uh, in many cases, chefs and also uh, ordinary people, they would say, well, it's something that tastes delicious. It's a sort of a lucky combination of taste and, 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 and flavors, but it need not be umami uh, because umami is a very well-defined sensation. And of course, there is just like for salty, there is, we have something in our kitchen that induces salt, and you know what it is. You take sodium chloride, the ordinary kitchen salt, or if you want something that is sweet, you may take sugar. But there is actually compound which you can take in the illicit umami, and that's the third spice, I mean glutamate, mm. and uh, which, which has a sort of a, uh, there's a long story about that and uh, where you want to use it an additive or not, and we can discuss that. Mm. But there's a, so we actually have something in the kitchen. It's not used very often, uh, but we have something that when you know you add that, it'll elicit umami. But it's all, always a combination with other things. And and the glutamate, uh, the synthetic, uh, you know, the, the produced um, glutamate is also this very strange it has a strange t uh, smell to it, in it. and uh, actually you can taste if it's the, uh, what I call unnatural, uh, instead of using ingredients. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, uh, another thing in but you know there's no unnatural molecule. No, but it's an unnatural way of using it. So, so uh, uh, as, a, as a scientist, I would say the glutamate you get in a bottle 
that is produced in the chemical factory, it's identical yeah, yeah. to what is produced inside a tomato. Yeah. That's not the same thing as say that you, I encourage you to use it, no, no. because it could be misused in the sense, just like with flavors, yes. that it could be used to disguise poor ingredients. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but that's not much different from no. salt. Uh, and I, I would say that glutamate is just as dangerous as salt. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I like the, the, you know, when you use it, it may also be something with human, uh, you know, it, it, it feels, it's funny that some products feel wrong to use mm -hmm. and some f products feel right to use if you take the take on every molecule is, you know, yeah. the same. But the, the, the reason why you, you say that, and we do a lot of tricks with children yeah. and, and teach them about this, and the reason why you say it tastes strange or different, Off. or uh, if I ask you or ask you another one, and they will get different opinions of how this pure substance tastes. And the reason for that is that you have things in your saliva, mm -hmm. and it combines with the saliva and provides this synergy to different extents. And that's mm -hmm. why some say it's soapy, some say it's salty, mm -hmm. some say it's artificial. And if, if you give it to Japanese, uh, the Japanese would say it tastes Ajinomoto, mm -hmm. which is the name of the company that yeah. produces yeah. it. <laughs> it is. Just like we would say it tastes Kno or yeah, yeah. Uh, Maki or something like yeah. that. So it's very also social, uh, culturally linked, yeah. related. <coughs> Personally, I use the umami uh, I tried to do what well, I tried. I'm doing it actually. I call. I give it. I gave it colors, uh, just to bring me to into another place. So I actually, when I work with umami, I have like red and black and white and green <laughs> umami. Green is vegetable based, in you know where I concentrate some of the vegetable juices or reduce or what I work. Uh, red is more meat, and 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 black is often fermented. Like if you make. You could make totally like a soy sauce. We talked about it without using soy, but everything else. I'm doing it with, with barley right now. Um, and white, I actually is more than in, in the aged cheese milk division. And <coughs> putting it up there with colors, it's, I guess it's a chef thing, having a visual creativity. It, you know, you, your information just brought me different places. It, it started different questions mm -hmm. and different like, okay, what's out there in the green department that I can use in a certain way? <clears throat> what kind of um, spores are there for fermentation? We talked about this also, uh, which in this fermentation process, the, the, you know, can create a lot of taste and smells and give you a, a sensation. Umami for me and kukumami, the, the, the longness of the Kukumi. taste, um, is for me, I put it in my notes always as a mouth feel, uh, you know, because for me, like you said, it's is is umami a taste of some high taste umami? For me, it's a mouth feel. It's like a richness and kukumi, like the the the, the extents of how long I can taste this body uh, richness to it. Um, so, so so that's the way I kind of took your notes and made it into my little umami world and, and, and researching and finding different stuff of umami. Well, there's a cultural element to whether you like it in a certain context or not. And we're talking about fermented stuff and we sort of back to Livy Strauss's way of separating sort of the unedible and the, the mm -hmm. rotten and, and the delicious. Yes. And the, board, the borderline there is why we have all the fermented stuff. Yes. And, and different cultures will end up with different sides on this line. And um, quite often, many of these fermented food stuff, they, they're very off-putting in terms of aroma and, 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 f and flavor. But once you taste them, they're delicious. Yes. I mean, we have in this country, in neighboring countries, many of these very powerful <laughs> fermented stuff like Surströmming. And we saw pictures of Hakal earlier uh, this morning and uh, so the fermented shark. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, fish sauce in, from the Asian cuisine. The old uh, Roman garum, they smell horrible, uh, but they're very tasty because then the taste buds realize yes. that is umami. Yeah. 